Neural radiance fields, or NERFs for short, are this absolutely fascinating concept that has huge implications for virtual and augmented reality, as well as robotics. It lets you convert 2D images into these full and rich 3D scenes. But you're probably wondering, how does this thing work? <laughs> well, let's start off here. Look at these two images. If you flip them back and forth quickly enough, it almost looks like the guy's waving. But obviously, he's a bit choppy. So what do you do in animation? Well, you add another frame in between. This concept is called interpolation, and generally, it gives the appearance of making things smoother. And that's pretty cool for 2D. But what's the equivalent for 3D? Well, let's say I took a bunch of pictures and I did the same thing, flipping them back and forth, and obviously it's just a bunch of 2D pictures, right? But what if I told you that you can use AI to convert it into a 3D object with just a few 2D pictures? That's what neural radiance fields are. This ability to understand our 3D world through 2D images, and it's incredible. Let me explain how it works. Have you ever injured your eye? and you've had to cover up one eye like this and you notice that your sense of 3D is completely gone because of the fact that you, well, you have to have two eyes, two different perspectives looking at an object to see if it's 3D. Neural radiance fields take this idea and it essentially uses a bunch of 2D images to take a strong, educated guess at what the 3D object would look like. For example, you can take a bunch of different images of a tree and then be able to, do, to simulate that tree in 3D. Or you can take pictures of this dinosaur and be able to simulate each individual bone on the ribs. But there's a problem. When you're looking at something, it's gonna look different depending on which angle you look at it from, right? In fact, the light's gonna hit it different. The color is gonna look completely different. So how do you take these photos, even though the individual spots are gonna have different colors? Think about the shiny surface of a stove. I'm gonna pick spot and, you know, at this specific spot, the stove looks gray from where we're looking. But if I move the camera, it turns white and that reflects the light. So that difference in color, like the same spot, but just different perspectives, that's what's called a radiance distribution. Hence why this particular thing is called a neural radiance field. We basically take a whole bunch of these rays from our camera, and then when it hits something, then we say it's that color. We also take a bunch of camera rays, and then when we hit something hard feeling, we say, ah, this is hard or dense. But what about transparent things? After all, not every surface is a hard surface that light just bounces off of. Uh, if you were to, for example, have a red cube inside muddy brown water, then it's gonna be all sorts of weird colors. It's not gonna be exactly red, but it's not gonna be exactly brown. So when you shoot a ray at this red cube under the water, you actually hit the transparent water first in real life. So here what we're doing is we're taking the camera's ray of vision and then you're taking individual points in that vision. And then when you hit something, that signals an increase in what's called the volume density. In fact, the neural radiance field is really just the program's best guess of the color that comes out in terms of the red, green, blue values and the volume density. And it does that extremely well. You basically take all these 2D images and you make them not just understand a 3D appearance, it's not just the illusion of 3D, it's actually that the software understands what points are hard and what points are not hard, which surfaces will probably reflect things, and what color it will be. This understanding means you can do some really crazy stuff, like you can simulate a digital object in a 3D world, like this ball bouncing around. You can even light the object in ways that it was never lighted, and you can visualize it correctly. This is critically important in Apple's augmented reality glasses because essentially it means that the software gets this incredible understanding of the world around you. It's also important for robotics because if you're doing digital simulations for a robot, having a accurate reflection of the real world in its digital mind is a really great way for it to navigate that world. This world we're living in is becoming infused with technology. So it's important to understand that technology because maybe we can use it to make things better. As a doctor, not a computer scientist, I wonder if there are medical things that this will actually help with, like being able to recreate a digital environment so you can use software to automatically detect stuff on the ground that would ordinarily make elderly people trip on them and fall. You can therefore maybe use neural radiance fields for preventive health, preventing people from falling over and then fracturing their hip, which can lead to hospitalization, especially when you've got like osteoporosis and stuff. A 3D understanding of the world as it is, is an important first step. That's something that neural radiance fields can definitely play a part in. 
And if that means the world can be a bit better and a bit more interesting, then that's definitely something that I'm excited about. If you're interested, I've got a newsletter, which I promise I'll eventually write in. I'm gonna be talking about YouTube and business and tech and all those sorts of things that I learn as I learn them. So it's gonna be completely free and feel free to sign up. It's gonna be interesting, I promise. <laughs> um, otherwise, YouTube recommends this video next. I don't know what this video is, but YouTube recommended it. Um, and I'll catch you in the next video otherwise.